Hi everybody, Karen Roby here with James Sanders uh, talking today about IBM and Open Power's big announcement about open source hardware. So uh, just elaborate for us, James, here out of the gate, a little bit on the announcement and what was said. Trying to unpack this announcement can be a little bit difficult because the name of the foundation is called Open Power, right? <laughs> so it, it seems like it should already be open. And for a great extent, it really is. But what they've announced is that any company can take the power instruction set architecture, the ISA, and implement that in any way into their own products. Mm -hmm. And this, this is a big deal. It is going to be something that as more companies are getting into building their own custom hardware, mm -hmm. this is something that you're seeing more from Google and Facebook and other you know, tier one tech companies, they really want to make their own hardware and this is going to be something that they can use in their own products. And when they say open, you can take this, you can combine it with any other technology you want, and there are some you know, branding things about how you can implement Power ISA without implementing it in a way that makes it incompatible with other stuff. And that's a little bit more weedy, but fundamentally, having Power 9 mm -hmm. and Power 10 is going to be coming out in 2021, but having Power 9 available is going to be a really big thing for enterprise computing. and the next generation type of accelerator driven computing. Like when you have GPUs that work really closely with CPUs for AI uses, that's something that Open Power is really involved in and Power 9 is used in the two most powerful supercomputers in the world. So how do you or how do you think that this will impact though Intel and say ARM in the data center? The spokespeople at Open Power really don't want to position this as being a direct competition for mm -hmm. general purpose compute. And granted, a lot of their focus is on accelerators. That said, this is going to be kind of a big deal. AMD is already edging in on Intel's market share for, you know, in the data center. So that is something that we're seeing a lot more of. There's already AMD in Azure and AWS. And AWS also has, you remember, the Graviton processor. Mm -hmm. That is an ARM core, and there have been a lot of initiatives to try to make ARM really work for general purpose compute in the data center. And while that work is still ongoing, I think having an open Power9 ISA that, you know, there's no royalties, it's patent inclusive, is going to be a lot more compelling as an alternative ISA to the Intel or AMD stuff, x86-64, than having that, everyone likes free. Of course, yes. <laughs> so not having to pay any money for it, I think, is mm -hmm. going to be a lot more compelling adoption story than ARM is going to be in the data center. And how do you think, you know, uh, talk a little bit about how this differs uh, from RISC-V, some of the, the big obvious differences here. With RISC-V, yeah, you'll see that in data centers, and like Western Digital mm -hmm. has already announced that they're going to, I think it ship a billion RISC-V cores. And that's going to be, you know, drive controllers, stuff that they were already using ARM for, that they want to build their own little RISC-V processors and use it embedded inside their own products. And that's going to save them a boatload of money because RISC-V, like Open Power Now, is royalty free. So with that, you're going to see a lot more of this, but RISC-V is really more for edge use cases, embedded use cases, drive controllers, that type of thing. There are projects to make Linux run on top of RISC-V. It's possible that you could see uh, a couple years down the road, hobbyist uh, hardware using RISC-V in like embedded systems like laptops or phones, mm -hmm. where that's more of an Intel or ARM area now. But I think open power is going to stay a lot more toward enterprise computing. I'd be very surprised if you really saw a lower open power mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, in use in a laptop or something. Whereas RISC-V is going to be a lot more for things that you can run on batteries, things that are not mm -hmm. particularly power intensive. There's a lot of power <laughs> right. you know, involved in the situation. So it, that that's really where the key difference is. It's going to be RISC-V is going to be a little more embedded. Open power is going to be a lot more for enterprise compute. Okay. Well, if you want to learn more about IBM and Open Power's announcement, make sure you check out James's article. Uh, you'll find it there on Tech Republic. Thanks for watching.